Hello and welcome to 100 Must Read Fantasy Novels with me, Stephen E. Andrews, Outlaw Bookseller, and the next in a series based on readings from the book 100 Must Read Fantasy Novels by myself and Nick Renison. And today we're talking about the impact of Raymond E. Feast, Magician. Hello, this is Stephen E. Andrews, writer, bookseller. Welcome to the channel Outlaw Bookseller. And this is the latest in our series, 100 Must Read Fantasy Novels, based on the book I wrote with Nick Renison. And today we're going to be looking at the commercial and critical impact of Magician by Raymond E. Feist. Magician is an important book to me, not artistically as i will say i'm not a massive fan of this kind of dynastic ongoing large big fat book type fantasy i tend to prefer the material that was produced before 1977 in most cases but it was a really important book for me because i hadn't been a bookseller long when this came out and i sold huge huge amounts of it and what you're seeing here is the grafton original a format small format paperback um, but what was interesting about Magician was that when it came out in this format, it had caused such a stir and it was so popular that people bought its sequel, Silverthorn, in large format trade paperback. Now, that was important because until that time, the large format trade paperback, that is a trade paperback that is the same size as the hardcover, effectively set from the same text block. It would have been printed the same time. There'd have been no difference apart from the ISBN number. Um, and both numbers for the trade and the hardback would be on the back of the full title page of the colophon. The fact is that this is the first time that a trade paperback had really sold in the UK in fiction, full stop. So Silverthorne, I'd love to show it to you in trade paperback, but I can't because I cannot find one anywhere. I can't even find a photograph of one. And it really established the trade paperback format as the mid-price alternative between the hardcover um, and the standard A format paperback, which have been published a year later. And this was standard in the industry for many decades until quite recently. The trade paperback then would come out three months after the hardcover. So you'd have the hardcover first. A few people would buy that. A lot would go to libraries. People who couldn't wait for the A format would then go for the trade, which is the same as the same size. And eventually a year after the hardcover, nine months after the trade, you'd get the A format. So it was from Silverthorn on that really, really the trade paperback became a thing. And I sold loads of trade paperbacks in science fiction and fantasy then right to the end of the 80s and beyond. It was the thing which was a lot more popular than the hardcover. So I'm going to read from you from the book 100 Must Read Science Fiction Novels about what I said about Magician. Raymond E. Feist, born 1945, USA. Magician, published 1982, series, The Rift War Saga. Before Magician appeared, publishing novels in the larger trade paperback format as a mid-price alternative to an expensive hardcover, some nine to 12 months before the standard mass market edition was issued, had proved to be a non-starter. But Feist's first novel was so compelling that fantasy readers were too eager to wait for a regular paperback. Silverthorne, sequel to Magician, made publishing history in Britain by establishing the trade paperback as a best-selling format. Soon afterwards, numerous fantasy authors found that their new book was issued in boards for collectors and trade paperback for fans on a tight budget who couldn't wait any longer to buy it in paperback. Aside from the immediate critical reception accorded to Magician, the secret of Feist's groundbreaking success lay in his offering the readers not one, but two secondary fantasy worlds. Whereas numerous other writers had used Our Earth and another magical realm, Feist gave us Midkemia, a medieval flavoured land of the Tolkien-esque variety, and Kelowan, an oriental world reminiscent of feudal Japan. 
These two worlds intersect via rifts in space-time, creating the major conflicts of the book and providing suitably exciting settings for the quests of friends Pug and Thomas, who both find their respective destinies as wizard and warrior. Pug is a particularly enduring character and admirers of Frodo Baggins will instantly identify with him. Magician was probably the most important traditional sold and sorcery novel of the 1980s, a time when there was a massive flowering of popular talent in the genre. Despite stiff competition from the likes of David Eddings and Terry Brooks, Feist reigned supreme in those golden days of genre fantasy publishing. Prior to his success as an author, Feist had constructed role-playing games, a skill that served him well in constructing the imperious Rift War saga. He has continued to produce addictive bestsellers ever since, and his stature as a leader of the field remains undiminished. That was what I wrote back in 2009. Here we also see an original Grafton HarperCollins paperback A format edition of Silverthorn, the sequel to Magician. This was the book which in the trade format really smashed through and it smashed through because of the readability and compulsive quality of Magician. As I say, I'm not really a huge fan of this sort of writing and this sort of thing. Um, I did an event with um, Raymond E. Feist in 1988 and I think it was, that would have been after the third Rift War book. And I'm struggling now to remember which book it was for, because of course, Darkness of Sithanon was the third in the series. Um, and basically I'd done an event with Michael Moorcock just a few weeks earlier, and I'd had a huge amount of people turn up and I sold 120 books. Feist was actually bigger than Moorcock then, and Moorcock was pretty big, but Feist was a mass market success beyond Moorcock at that period and I expected a lot of people to turn up but we literally had six people turn up at the bookshop and this was surprising and it said to me something about the difference maybe between Feist fans and Moorcock's fans. Moorcock was very long established, had been involved with the counterculture, had written science fiction, fantasy, mainstream novels, non-fiction, all sorts of things, where Feist was more, you know, writing for one market and um, even though he was absolutely charming um, it was a very interesting thing to see how few people turned up. So that, that's always been a puzzling one for me. And I marketed it in exactly the same way. So that's Silverthorn and Magician. I bought these copies a while ago because um, even though, as I say, it's not the sort of writing I really like in fantasy. If you like the sort of big sort of things which are currently popular, things like Brandon Sanderson, um, you know, Scott Lynch, anything like that you know you you'd love these they're you know they're, they're great they, they really fulfill the tolkien-esque end of the form and the two um alternate sort of worlds um you know fighting against each other it's really interesting and that's really the innovation that made him the star he was really these are hard to come by now in this condition as i say i only bought them about a year two years ago um i didn't pay that much for them i was just lucky it just goes to show that if you shop around this is what you can get and I suppose at some point I should try and get the third one, but it's the first two that mean a lot to me. Um, Grafton is one of my favorite publishers. Um, and as you'll see there, the edition of Magician has got the Flame and the Wave, which shows us a later printing, um, just before it, it ceased being Grafton, just became HarperCollins. And later on the SF imprint of, you know, Grafton, HarperCollins became um, Voyager. And um, this is an earlier printing of Silverthorn because it nearly says Grafton. So there you go. So that's the, um, the A format originals and very beautiful as well. So they're iconic books. Um, let's say not really my sort of thing, but if you like traditional Tolkien-esque fantasy writing with the extra little spin there, then you'd love these. So this is Stephen E. Andrews, um, 100 Must Read Fantasy Novels. We also do 100 Must Read Science Fiction Novels. Please subscribe. There'll be more coming on different aspects of fantasy. And thanks for watching. Bye for now.